if you pay the mark to talk to you, what would they tell you? If they could talk to you, could they actually describe approval force or contact timing? Whereas using the P-scan and digital approval force data to complement the use of articulating paper helps you have permissions to better treat your patient's approval. The P-scan brings paper box to life. And so I'm going to show you a typical P-scan case, and we'll talk about um, these graphics that you see right here. And the P scan itself is certainly highly evidence based. It's very repeatable. If you learn to record well, which is a skill, the P scan will give you the same data 20 to 24 times for the given sensor. And the beauty of the P scan system is that it quantifies the occlusion for you in ways that you uh, are not as present capable in any other medium. For example, if you look at the graphics on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see that this force percentage for two, the last two teeth on the left are making up 54% of the occlusion. You see that as each tooth has its own force percentage, there's color coded force columns, mental window that indicate relative force, high force being pink, low force being blue, and 256 levels in between. There's percentage of arch half delineation, for example, this case is 75% left, 25% right, and this is a force summation vector, where you see the mouse is near the force summation vector, that's, this tells you the history of forces as the person occludes into their teeth or makes an excursion, so with all this quantification, it makes it very possible for you to know exactly what the occlusal dynamics are, without you having, without you having to subjectively uh, interpret them. And because it's non-subjective, it allows you to make very intelligent, predictable diagnoses. For example, in this case, it's not hard to realize that the fight is way off to the left side, that the last two teeth on the left are taking most occlusion and significantly more occlusion than the rest of the case, that you know, the case is completely imbalanced, and a lot of it's concentrated in the posterior left. So you already know that just by looking at the graphic. And that helps you then predictably treat the case and obtain physiologic end results that speed up occlusion care and allow you to know that you're actually treating the right teeth in the right context. So I'm going to show you this case now. This is a patient who presented to the office, my office, for a routine cleaning, checkup, new patient moved into the area. She told us that she had four crowns made one at a time each year for four years, about five years before she came to see us. And she used her insurance, which many of you are familiar with using your insurance. So she had one crown made four years in a row. And you have to believe each time she told the dentist that it feels good when she left. But we noticed a lot of recession in the posterior left, as you can see in the picture in the upper right hand corner. And of course, nobody prepares the teeth halfway down the root surface. And she was told many times that she was brushing her teeth too hard, which of course an unlikely candidate for causing this kind of recession, even though some people do advocate that. It's really not been shown scientifically that we can brush away our, our gingiva. And yet, when we do the P scan, we find out that 54% of the occlusion is on those four crowns. You can come in and say, oh, you know, I had these four crowns made, and ever since then, I haven't been able to bite on my left side. It's way too forceful. It feels like my bite is off. She didn't say that at all. All she said was, yeah, I have these four crowns made and they told me I'm brushing too hard. So now look at the TPM data and look at the paper marks that are on the number 15 crowns. There are no paper marks. There's no way for you to know on this tooth that 37% of the, of the left side is on that one tooth alone. By looking at the As a matter of fact, we think there's no contact there. Now, if you go one tooth forward, which is making up 17% of the occlusion, you see there's a myriad of paper marks, but which ones are high and which ones are low force? Well, notice in the middle, with black and red, that's actually low force, that's blue. The higher force is more to the distal buckle and to the distal lingual, which is this area and this area. And then, the arrow is supposed to keep on the 12, which has a very large mark, black on top of red, and yet that's the lowest force on the side. You can see that here, just below, uh, just below 11 meters of 12, very low force. So 
what you're seeing here is the inability of our ticketing paper to quantify for you what really is going on clinically. So here's this patient's CT scan recording. And what you'll see is that not only is there a lot of pressure in the left, but he's on the nine is too early. Number six is too early in the scan. She's number 15, mesial palatal is the earliest contact. Surrounded by other contacts in the number 15. And the full information travels to the left because of the fact that the left side is so hyperocluded. But there's actually a number of treatments that are hyperocluded 11 mesial, 9 distal, 7 marginal root, and 15 and 14. And so the key team outlines it all for you and plays it for you in a dynamic recording that it's impossible to register in any other way because it measures timing and force. And this is a typical T scan analysis that would occur with a patient. This was a screening exam. In other words, this patient had this recession, so we took out the T scan, and this is what we found. Extreme left side overload. Patient completely unaware. So a very important reason to use the T scan data as a complement to our ticketing paper is that it simplifies for you the locating of a food force excess and the time premature tooth contact in ways that paper marks are unable to. Paper marks are a static measure. They do not have the capability to measure time or force. For example, in this picture, it appears that all this is happening at the same time, but it really doesn't happen at the same time. And look how variable the paper marks are in terms of judging what the forces might be. For example, piece number 11, Mugio has a small sort of medium-sized mark, small medium-sized mark. It's moderately forceful. Number 14, Mesial, has a fairly large mark, but it's not the most forceful contact. Piece number 15 has a smudgy mark, a not a distinct mark, in the central plaza. That's the most forceful contact. And the business mark on the, on the side is actually here. Piece number 13, Mesial. Well, that's the lowest force on the side. So you can see that the marks do not statistically load in any kind of way that you can know which ones are which. By using this technology, your ability to understand which paper marks really are uh, exhibiting a cruise force excess and which parts of the teeth are exhibiting a cruise force excess is greatly improved. And then you can diagnose better and you can treat. You can eliminate contact appearance misinterpretation, which leads to frequent occlusion problems if you use the data. Um, if you want more information about the TCM Mesial Light Force Technology, you can take down this information, um, www.techscan.com slash dental, or call the phone numbers you see there, or you can email marketing um, at techscan.com. 